During these exercises, you will learn how to use Plans Express and Photo Visualizer to create attractive 3D models and other outputs which will capture your client's imagination. Before you attempt to take on the steps in this video, you need to have mastered the basics of Plans Express and know how to design and place all architectural objects, which can then automatically be estimated using Estimator Express. Let's start by looking at creating the basic 3D model using the level commands. In this sample job, on screen, we have a basic house divided over two floors. When you first draw the different floors, they appear in the 3D model side by side on the same level. In order to create the 3D house model, you need to add level boxes for each floor to stack them on top of each other and create your basic 3D model. To understand what levels to use, have a look at the section. Normally, one would set the ground floor DPC at 0.0, although you can use any datum you wish. The first floor level is then set at the same height as your ground floor wall height and should have been calculated by adding to the ground floor to ceiling height plus the overall joist and floorboards thickness. In this drawing we have also placed the roof on its own level. This as you can see allows you to create 3D floor plans for upstairs floors without the triangular gables showing. To place a level box on the drawing select the level command from the 3D menu. For the ground floor, enter the base height at zero and the wall height to the level of the first floor. Zero in that box, 2550 in that box, this corresponds to the height of the wall. Click OK. Select your reference point. And place your level box around the respective floor. Repeat the process for the other floors. Press refresh. Note that by default the ground floor is level with the external ground level and therefore usually needs to be raised by at least 150 mm to create a realistic model. Note however that the cost of the foundations and the footings have already been estimated within the main wall. To create your external works area, including slabbings and paths and lawns, etc., you will need to create a level at, say, 150 mm below the ground floor level. To start creating the external works, first copy the ground floor walls plan using the copy command and place your external works around the footing. Select the existing ground floor walls by pressing the control key while selecting each section of the wall. Next press middle click, copy selection, select the common reference point and place the footprint adjacent to the drawing. Set the wall height to 150 millimeters and switch off the foundations and windows etc. Click OK. As discussed earlier, you now need to mark the footing as non-estimated. Group select each of the walls, middle click and set as non-estimated. Now place your level box for your external works. Set the base height at minus 150 millimeters and the wall height at 150 mil. Click OK. Give the reference point and create your box 
so that it covers the rest of the garden. Click OK. You can now rename this level using the Properties dialog. Click on the level, select Properties Explorer, change the name to Hard Landscaping. Repeat this renaming process for all other levels. Note in this tab you can also edit the base and level heights. Alternatively, you can double click on the box and you can change them there. Now, let's place a the paving to the front of the house. First place some construction lines to set out the site boundaries. Do that using the relative command, using the R key. Placing the boundary and the front edge of the paving, say two metres away from the house walls. Click the R key and repeat for the other side. Same for the front of the house. Click the R key Once you've placed your construction lines, you can then place your landscaping. Let's start with the block paviers. Change the various settings to your own requirements. Press Finish. Press C to close. Repeat the process for slabbing, lawns, and adding retaining walls, etc. Note that we have also added some 3D fencing and also a 3D pergola. Please note that none of these objects are estimated. Once placed, you can set the height of the top of all surfaces relative to the hard landscaping level, along with the thicknesses of the object. Note this process also applies to internal slabs, carpets and tiling. Select the object you wish to edit, go to the Properties Explorer. If the Properties Explorer is not visible, go to the Views and 3D tab and select the Properties option and set the relative height. In this case I've set it to 0 for the relative height and the thickness of 300mm. If I select the rear lawn, you can see that I've set the relative height at 600 and the thickness at 600 as well. As the hard landscaping level is minus 150mm below the slab level, this will result in the lawn 450mm above the main slab level. If we then look at the 3D view, you can see that all the thicknesses are visible in the 3D model. We have also added an additional level box to incorporate a fence. Let's now have a look at the 3D model. Click on the 3D view tab and you can see the 3D model. If you look closely you can see that there is a 150mm difference between the house slab and the external works. And the rear lawn is 450 millimetres above the base level of the house. The 3D fencing has been placed. We'll show you more about that later. Let's now have a quick look at how we can view the model. The first thing we can do is look at the visibility tab. The visibility tab allows you to switch on and off the various parts of the model. Note that you can enable the Auto Refresh to enable the 3D model to be updated each time you make a selection or change. Or conversely, set it to Off so that the model is only refreshed when you press the Refresh button. Note that switching off the Auto Refresh is also very useful when creating complex models, as automatically refreshing the model each time you add a wall or door will slow the process down. 
As far as the 3D model is concerned, for example, you can switch off the external walls so that you can see the room layout more easily in 3D. You can then examine the model and explore the various rooms. Once you have finished exploring the model, switch the walls back on. Here you can turn on and off the various levels. So for argument's sake, if you just wish to see a picture of the ground floor, you would switch off these four levels. When you have deselected each layer, press the refresh button. You can then rearrange the picture and save it to your hard drive. Once you have created a library of images, you can embed them into your drawings also if you wish. Using the image command. Another interesting view which you can create is what we call an exploded view. This is simply created by increasing the distance between the level boxes. Double click on the first floor level and edit the base height. This was originally set at 2550 and we've added 3000 millimeters to it to raise it above the lower floor. Similarly, we have added 6 meters to the 4875 millimeter layer in order to raise that up as well. Click OK, press refresh and the exploded view is created. When you're ready to revert to the original view, simply edit the level boxes back to their original values. And press refresh. Let's now have a look at the dynamic 3D section command. This function allows you to easily create sections through the model on any axis or multiple axes. To initiate the command, select B on your keyboard. Next, select any face of the model, including the sides using the left mouse. Rotate the scroll wheel and the dynamic section is created. Next, release the mouse and place the cursor outside of the model. Left click and, holding the mouse button down, rotate and explore the model. Click on the model again, rotate the scroll wheel and you can change the section. You can repeat the process on multiple axes. Go back to the original one, rotate that, and you can see then you've got a section through the corner of the building. If you wish, you can click on the top, rotate down, and get a part plan view, part section view. Once again, you can save any image to your hard drive and insert 3D sections into your drawings. Once you have finished, press C on the keyboard and the model is restored. Please note that the 3D sectional model cannot be exported into Photo Visualizer. You have perhaps noticed that the walls sometimes become transparent as we have moved around the model. You can use this function to look through any object. Simply press the control key on your keyboard and move the mouse around over the model. You may have wondered how you can change the textures of the model within Plans Express. There are two ways of doing this. The first method is to use the global textures command. This command will apply a texture to all similar objects. 
For example, I can change the colour of all external rendered walls. From the Views and 3D menu, select the textures. Choose the object, in this case Walls, Render, and you can see that by default we've got a white stucco applied to the wall. In all cases you can apply a texture or change it to a simple colour. Let's start by changing the texture. I can select the file or more simply I can double click on the texture. In the textures dialog you can choose from a range of different textures. I'm going to stay with the wall coverings and choose an alternative texture. Let's go for stucco 8. Double click, click OK and press refresh. In this case, as you can see, all of the walls are being changed simultaneously. If however I wish to change just one or two walls, I can do that through the Properties Explorer. Select a wall using the Control key. Press Properties Explorer. Identify the texture to be changed. Double click. Select an alternative texture. And press Set. Go back to the 3D model, press refresh and you can see that the wall has changed to the new colour. You can obviously repeat that process for other walls. In the next video we'll be looking at adding non-estimated 3D symbols.